as we wait for the microphone. We did have a phenomenal New Year's, and I hope that you all had a phenomenal New Year and a Merry Christmas. God is good. Amen. We're going to get, um, yeah, I'm going to talk to him. I'm going to talk to you all till they get him a microphone. But today is going to be a great day. Um, a lot of churches do Vision Sunday, and basically that's kind of what we're doing today. Um, it's not something that we do every year. We like to be led by the Spirit. Amen. And um, when Pastor um, told me, he said, you know, we're going to do this week as Vision Sunday, I said, well, let's go. The people need vision. Habakkuk said, write the vision down, make it plain, so when you read it, you can run with it. Amen? Amen. And that's what we're doing today. Amen. That's what we're doing. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Amen. I know it's a different feel, a different format. We are starting a... Um, a, a, a talk, a conversation, a message series, as we call it, called You Care. And it's kind of a play on words for the idea that came across this past year real heavily about, about self-care. People started focusing on the idea of self-care. And um, so before we jump into the series, this is, this is kind of, um, you know, a, a foundation for the year. We don't, we don't always do a vision um, day on the first day of the year and that's generally because um you know just because the calendar year changed i don't know what it is about churches they think god has changed because it's january and anyway the calendar that we're using ain't god's calendar anyhow um he don't know nothing about january but uh that's a whole different topic and discussion but anyway it's a good it's for the for the the natural person, you know, it's just a good place to do it sometimes. So God is not really up to anything new, um, but we have, uh, uh, we want to refocus if we can say it that way. So you'll be comfortable today. If you're new today, um, we've had so much church the past couple of weeks. Um, I don't know. Generally, this room is packed. So I want to see everybody next week. Bring your, your family members back. I don't know if they're churched out or if they're online. <laughs> if you're online, God bless you. We're glad you're online. Um, but anyhow, it's going to be a fun day. So I know that throughout this, this um, time that we talk about vision, there's going to be points of, of revelation that you didn't uh, maybe know before or whatever. But make sure you still have a notepad ready because vision day is not a boring day. No, uh-uh. It's not a boring day. I know we got the chairs out here and stuff, um, but it'll be, a, it'll be kind of a, just a talk. But it's going to have some power to it as well. We don't, we don't do boring at Excel Church. We don't do boring. So nothing we do is, if you were here New Year's Eve, you know. That's like right. Like he said, <laughs> we all went home and felt our age. Yeah. You're like, these ankles yeah. and knees, they all hurt. Amen. 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 So listen, let's, let's dive right in. Father, we thank you so much for this day together. God, help our vision to be very clear as to what heaven is wanting to do in the earth. And God, help us to understand it so that we can latch on to it and help be a part of serving it in Jesus name. Amen. 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 So, what we what we started doing if you're new at the church, what we started doing um it was this is just our last season before prior to the pandemic, we had kind of a, a phrase that we put out. And uh, it was it was prior to the pandemic and and it was um stay together. How many of y'all remember that? Stay together. We had we had t-shirt day, stay together. We had tags, key tags, stay together. And then that was such a timely thing. God put that out prior to all of the pandemic. And we didn't have a building at the time. And um, we, were, we were in a high school. And then through 2020, I mean, it's amazing how well you guys stayed together. Yes. And how much you did through the pandemic. Uh, you built the church. You got this location ready to go. Yes. You gave very generously and committed to the vision. And this is... We've only been here, uh, goodness, since May. Yeah. So if you can just, does it feel like longer? Yeah. Feels longer, right? But we've only been in the building since May. This will not be our final destination, however. So as we pour out more vision today, uh, we want you to know not only it will, at some point, this building won't be big enough. Right. Uh, but it already ain't big enough when all of y'all come. But, but. Not only that, but other ministries and people are starting to latch on to what we're doing here. And so we want to be a blessing and, and expand even more to other buildings and other churches and all that kind of stuff. So yes. let's get into it. So are you guys believing for bigger things in 2022 or did, or did 2021 knock the wind out of you? Are, you, are y'all still here? Yes. 
Are, are you still eager to do what God has called you to do? I mean, listen, I know it's been a, um, a tough time, but so our new season, I mean, this is not, we've been using this phrase, but in case you're new, now it's not stay together. We're going to build on it. We're going to stay together. Amen. Amen. But we're going to add on to that. And this one is, in case you didn't see it before, it's keep growing. Can you say keep growing? Keep growing. Keep growing. And the reason why we are saying keep growing uh, is because what the world really wants to happen is to stop you from growing. They would prefer, because let me tell you something. If you know anything about the story of the children of Israel, the one thing that they got nervous about was when the children of Israel started growing. Mm, yes. They looked at the population of the children of Israel and they said, this is not, they outnumber us right. or they're about to. And if we continue this, so then it said they oppressed them all the more. But what was the result? More. And the, the Bible says the more they pressured them, the harder they made the work. The more they took away provisions and niceties, what happened to the nation? I'm just asking by faith, is there anybody in this room right now, now. that believes that all the pressure that the world's been putting on, I got seven folks, but we're going to do it <laughs> with all seven, yes. that believes that there's going to be a multiplication effect and a Amen. growth reaction to the church this year. Amen. And the more they keep pouring it on, the bigger the church is going to get. Amen. The bigger the voice, the bigger the influence, the bigger the population, the bigger the meetings, the bigger the power, everything, because it's pushing things out of you that you didn't know was inside of you. It's pushing Amen. you to a point of no return. And so keep growing is, is really about going against what they're trying to do. It's the opposite of what they're saying. They're saying it's going down, it's going this, it's going bad, it's going to be worse, and da-da-da. That's their words, and their words don't apply to you unless you submit yourself to it. That's it. You need to say the opposite. That's right. It ain't going down, it's going up. It ain't going to be right. cold, dark, and, and disease-filled. It's going to be blessed, healthy, and strong. Somebody is yes. going to have to carry a different message around this place. Amen. Okay? So despite the challenges, now... Is, this is a, so the idea is keep growing. You should, we hashtag it. We, we, we put it out on a lot of our graphics and things. But that's just so you know, in case we start losing you in the turn of, of ministry. And you say, why is the church pushing? Why are, they, why are they going for this? And why are they going for that? And why are they not operating like the world? And, and it's because the vision from heaven for this house is to keep growing. And so sometimes we may have to maneuver in different ways, but we are not changing the mandate. Amen. The mandate is that this year we grow more Amen. and that we keep growing. We don't take a season off. We're not taking a day off. We're not taking a break. We're going to keep growing. Amen. Is, it, is this getting in your spirit yet? Yeah. Keep growing. That means it's not based on circumstances. It's not based on how severe the, the, the world you know, claims that things are. None of that matters. We keep growing despite the challenges. Okay? Amen. Okay, so uh, now, two things here. This is not just a corporate idea. This is also a personal thing for you. You must keep growing in order to be more effective. And in a sense, your growth is one thing that shows corporately in the church. So if the people are not growing, if you are not personally growing, then we are not going to be able to grow. So you have to take this personal. You can't just be like, well, that's nice. The church wants to keep growing. And then every time we do something that comes against your comfort zone or your level of understanding, maybe, or a message series challenges you or something, or life hits you and it challenges, whatever, that you don't start thinking that, well, I guess it's time for me to stop growing. Mm -hmm. That personally, you must continue to develop and mature. Now, we're going to put some definition to this real quick because uh, growth needs to have, you need to have some uh, some handles on this before we start. Did you want to add anything to that, babe? No, that was good. Okay. So, so it's not just a, cor a personal thing and a corporate thing. It's both. Amen? Amen. All right. So listen to this. So uh, this statement means that we, we don't expect not to see hard times, right? So, so let's not be acting like, we, you know, that there won't be a tough season or there won't be a challenge to that idea. Let's not act like that. But what we are saying is that we fully expect 
to see the kingdom of God more clearly in every situation that we face. And in fact, that's all you need to define trouble as. Trouble is not a, um, trouble and struggle is not here to destroy you unless you submit to the idea that it can destroy you. But if you submit to the idea that you are a citizen of the kingdom of God, fully backed, fully supplied, fully furnished for your assignment, here on purpose, I am an eternal being with an eternal spirit and an eternal assignment, then tell me what can destroy you. So you don't want to subscribe to that. That's what they're going to say to you. It can't rob your life. Material things, situations and circumstances cannot steal your life. They cannot steal your supply. It cannot steal your, uh, your purpose unless you actually have to give it to them. So when pressure comes, people start to uh, forfeit their property. Because you feel like I have to give my life over to the care of someone else, when God has put that solely in your hands, he has given you a dominion. He has given you power and authority to administrate his kingdom on the earth. So you can't believe that something externally can somehow change what God is doing in you. That's the first belief. You have to drop that. So you have to drop it, and that, but that doesn't exempt you from the challenge. So when the challenge comes, what do you believe about yourself? Do you believe you're indestructible, incorruptible, uh, you're unstoppable, and, the, and not just phrases that you say, but I know why. I'm a spirit being. I'm made in God's image and likeness. I'm connected to his purpose. I'm fully furnished, fully supplied. It's not because the job gave me money. It's because the kingdom is, is uh, my economy. Do you understand these foundational beliefs? Yeah. And that's why you should believe that, you know, nothing can stop you or rob your supply or take something away from you because only God has determined what supplies you. And unless you submit to the world's ideas, then you don't fall into that. So we don't, so we don't take hard times and define it as you, you shouldn't get anxiety and fear and say, oh, my God, we're about to lose this, lose that, lose progress. Lose. So you need to get rid of the idea that anything can cause you damage or loss. Mm -hmm. And I know that's contradicting, like, the reality of what you've faced in life. But, that, but, but I'm telling you, damage and loss is because of what you have believed. I've taken losses. I've had damages. I don't believe in it still. So I still don't believe, despite that things may have happened to you, I still don't believe that that is the reality of the kingdom. I just believe that we sometimes overestimate what we know. Yes. And, it, and, and, and sometimes the devil gets one in on you, and you better learn from it. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. So as, um, this is, whenever we face uh, tough times in 2022, what we need to do is look at ourselves as on an assignment yes. and say, I was placed here, so now let me release my creativity. Let me become the solution when everybody else is running from the yes. hard times, right. we should run into it and say, hey, I'm placed here to bring a solution to this situation. That's what we mean when we say spiritually grow this year. Not running from problems, but walking in it like, you know what? We're here to take care of it. Amen? Amen. So, so when, you hit a, when you hit an issue, your, your thing is going to be now, I'm going to see the kingdom clearly. So yes. I, what, and, and when we say spiritual growth, let's make sure we define this. Very clearly, because people use that term spiritual for a lot of things. So the kingdom of God uh, is the only spirit there is, okay? And everything that there is comes from God's kingdom. Only thing, the only thing you see is when things defect from the kingdom. Mm -hmm. You see a distorted version of something that God made good but has now gone somewhere else, okay? So when you look at the reality of creation, your being, your life, everything, God made it. It's on his foundation. As long as you stay in that, you are going to get God's favor, his backing, his blessing. That governs you. Yes. If you stay within that. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So now, even when you're in that, though, there are discoveries to make and there are things that you have to tune in to believe it better. So struggle has a way of doing that. So you need to see the kingdom more clearly. And in the kingdom, you don't see with your eyes. 
So, so let me, this is, this is a phenomenal, like, shift right here, right? So, like, doctors tell you, you see with your eyes, but you don't. You see with your ears. You don't see with your eyes. You see with your ears. So, if I say something, you see it. Yes. Seeing is a faculty of the mind. Okay? So, the mind picks up sound. And you can and it can interpret it as an image. And so when you hear God more clearly, you see the kingdom more clearly. But if you can't hear and understand, because hearing has to do with now I need not just to hear, but I need to comprehend. And the best way to comprehend something sometimes is when you struggle. Yes. And you realize the struggle was because I didn't understand. Okay? So so we make sure we understand what we're saying. Growing spiritual, I need to hear heaven more clearly. Yes. I need to hear and understand it more clearly. I need to see the kingdom more clearly so that I'm interpreting what God made, all of creation, everything God made. Are you, are you perceiving it the way it is, not the way they taught you to see it or the way your sinful nature would incline you to see it? So that means you need to, this year, guard your gate. Yes. Because yes. if faith comes by hearing, what are you hearing all the time? That's what you, be, you start believing. So guard your gates. Guard your spiritual gates, your ears, your eyes. What are you watching? Who are you listening to? Amen. Somebody said we'll see it more clearly this year. That's spiritual growth. So you're going to grow. You're going to be able to see more clearly. You're going to be able to hear more clearly. That's going to make you more effective. That's going to make you less anxious. That's going to make you less like knee-jerk reaction to everything the world throws at you. That's going to put you in your, in your spiritual closet more often. That's going to put you in the presence of God more often. That's going to make you hungrier and thirstier for righteousness more often, okay? Which is going to give you apprehension of kingdom things more often, all right? And so you'll have more victory. So we fully expect to see the kingdom more clearly. Now, we have to conquer this year in, in growing. We have to conquer some... Some myths that the world puts on things. So that's part of spiritual growth. We're going to conquer some of the myths and the limitations that they put on you. All right. So you know that the world is trying to conform you into their beliefs. And what we don't realize is how they will spare no expense to make sure you believe something. And they don't actually always know that they are participating in something that the devil has created. And that scripture, unknowingly, if you don't know, the Bible says you do the bidding of the devil. Mm -hmm. so, so when I wasn't doing the bidding of God, I, maybe we don't like to admit it, but I was working for the devil. Yes, yes. So maybe I didn't want to say it that way, but that's what the Bible teaches. So if I'm not, you know, intentionally expanding the kingdom, then I'm unintentionally expanding darkness. Mm. Right? And so we want to make sure that we break some of these myths that the world puts on us. So they, they, that's what they want to do. They want to limit your understanding, and they want to give you their understanding. And so uh, the, the idea uh, and the reason why it's so deceiving, mm -hmm. and if I'm sitting in this environment, I can say it slower, you know, because I have to sit down and, and pronounce my words and everything. <laughs> but I want to make it clear. The reason why it's so deceiving is because they're so intelligent. Understand that if you continue to pull from the, you know, the world system is how we define it is temporary. It's carnal. It's fleshly. It's only surface. It, it's not the real. It's the cover. That's all it is. So the, the, the devil hasn't created anything. He's wrapped a bunch of things in different ideas. Yes. And you believe what you see on the wrapping. Right. But behind it is actually what it is. And what it is is what God made it to be, but you only receive it based on what you call it. If you call Jesus a prophet, he can never be your king. That's it. That's it. Islam calls him a prophet. That's why he's not king. That's right. It's not that they ignore him. They call him the wrong thing. That's the same thing with us. Until you know Jesus is king, your, pro your problems are not lying. I mean, your issues are not going to be conquered like a king would do it. So... You have to see the world correctly, see your life correctly, see each other correctly, and then you'll start to receive it correctly. That's right. And if wrong perception 
and the world is trying to spend all this money to make sure you have the wrong perception can stop God from working in your life. Right? Y'all read the Bible? All it takes is to receive somebody after their flesh and it cuts off what they actually carry to you. So if you see church wrong, you see it by its fleshly meeting. This is an assembly of human beings coming to a building. You've already missed it. Right. That's why you don't feel like you got anything when you left. It's because you perceived it wrong. It's not that the power of God wasn't in here and everybody in here is crazy. No, we're not crazy. Right. You're just learning. Right. You're learning. And if you just drop everything you thought it was, God will show you what it really is. That's it's a it. powerful meeting that we're in. It's a powerful meeting. Okay, and the same thing for your neighbor. If you can stop looking at them by the flesh, you can receive the gift that they have. Amen. Okay, and so that's what spiritual growth is going to be doing because the world has spent a lot of money to educate you on what human beings can and cannot do. They're not sparing any expense, they're, and they don't always know it, and they're going to continue. So if you keep looking at things by the finite, the temporary, and the, the um, outside view, then you live by that. And it's just like trying to live from a finite resource that, like oil, for example, if oil is a finite resource, I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know that's what they say. But if it is, you know, for example, and we tap into it for a while, right? Well, it might heat your home and you might be celebrating. Thank God for the heat. Thank God for the heat. Thank God for the heat. Meanwhile, that reserve is getting empty. Thank God for the heat. Thank God. And you never knew that what you were thanking God for was a trap. I'm using that as an example. I don't know if that's true or not. But my point is, is that the thing that you keep looking at outwardly, you're using it, using it, using it. You're looking at it a certain way, and you're judging your life by that, and you're following it. You're following their information. You're following their science. You're following their... And while on the surface, it seems like it might help a little, if we don't grow spiritually, that is a finite resource, and all it does is lead you to a place for a great fall. Yes. That's all it does. And so while on the short term, it's okay, but on the long term, God is telling you today, it's best if you get off of that system altogether as fast as you can and become what you are. You are a spiritual being with a spiritual source, and that's yes. God. Amen. I'm preaching over yeah, you here. Are. Yeah, you are. You want to add anything to that? No, that was good. Okay. <laughs> so, so we need to break the ideas that the word is trying to wrap you in. And get on a life where we're living and walking and breathing and have health and have strength and have purpose by the spirit. Yes. And remember, we're the spirit is kingdom life, right? We're not that spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So watch out for the labels. They're going to label you a certain uh, race, denomination, your cultures, uh, the concepts that the world has been using for a long time. And, and all of these things have become the horizon for your life. They've become the limit. So this is what we have to understand going forward. The, the physical senses of the, of the world are horizons. And what I mean by that is if you go on a cruise, for example, and you walk to the, to the shore, the dock, and you're getting ready to board the cruise, okay? As you look out onto the ocean, eventually your, your physical senses can't see beyond a certain point. That's called the horizon. But is that the end? Now, if I told you in this room, for example, another example is that if you looked up at the ceiling and I told you that this is all the space that is in the world, I'd start to conform your mind to believe that this is the end, that this is the limit. But you know and I know that there is more space above the ceiling than there is in this room. Right. And you're not asking God for what's above the ceiling. You're trying to make everything work within the room, but there's limits to that. That's right. And so we have to go into the, the idea that we jump on the cruise ship, right? And we start heading out to the horizon that the things that are what seems to be trouble, because they're temporary, because they're materially based, because they're on the carnal program, they certainly shouldn't be able to harm you. But the only way you are going to expose it is if you get on the boat and go towards the horizon, not away, go towards the trouble, not away, and only then will your enemy be exposed as a false reality. That's right. That what you thought was solid and material and permanent, it doesn't even exist. It was your limited view of the kingdom. Oh, oh my God. God. That's it. That's it right there. 
So the devil's job is to alienate you from the life of God and blind the children of God from the real truth. And what does he do? He creates horizons with information that's very lofty. It's very prideful. It's very everything. Yes, it, you know, it's the doctors, the scientists, the, the economists, all these people, they give you the horizon. Now, that's, that's contradictory. That's Because con- you're going to live in a, in a mindset that is going to go against your nature. So you're going to intentionally say, I'm going to disprove the validity of that claim. So people were afraid of that horizon before on the ocean, weren't they? That's reality. So they get on the cruise ship and they go out there. The person on the shore is yelling danger. Are y'all getting this? Yeah. The spiritual growing person is saying, we are going to a party. I'm not sitting out here looking at the horizon anymore when God made so much more. Y'all trying to put all this stuff in front of the people of God. And God said, I told you to go to the promised land. I didn't tell you to worry about the giants in the land and all they've done and all that trouble. I told you to go and I would be a fire by day and a cloud, a cloud by day, a fire by night. All of that. I will be your front and your rear guard. I got you. You need to go see that that wasn't real. And so that means in this year, what we need to concentrate more on is not trying to find out who we are, but trying to find the mind of God, exactly. getting to know who he is. That's how you, you start to see the unlimited uh, horizon of God. Because if from your point of view, from what everybody's teaching you and you're trying to internally learn you, you're limiting yourself. But get to know him. You see how he is unlimited and then you become unlimited. Amen. Yeah, and, and so a lot of things have limited us. So religion and, and then worldly information, all of those things Jesus said to the religious people. He said that you are hypocrites, brood of vipers. He called them all these different things. And he said this very important statement. He said, you close the door of the kingdom. Yep. What is a door? It is a horizon. It is a limit. Yep. And it blocks the vision of what's inside. He said, you close the door and then don't let anyone in. He said, you don't go. You stay on the shore. Yeah. And people who want to go in, he said, you won't let them in. And that's what religion does. And that's what, what the world's. So this is, what, this is what we have to do. We have to grow and we have to go into this. And getting on that cruise ship, so to speak, while the person on the shore is yelling, danger, danger. Right. Okay. We are going to challenge darkness and not let it run all over us. Yes. And so, as I said, there might be struggle. There might be hard times. There might be times where you put your foot in the ground and you say, well, we're just going to see. But if you're reading this Bible, then eventually you have to face it. And listen, there are levels. We're not going to, uh, there are levels. Everybody in the room is on a different level of that. Yes. Different level. So you don't want to just, uh, you know, jump out into flippant behavior that you don't have a revelation for. Right. But you do want to allow the church and the leaders to challenge you. To see your personal situations differently so that you can go to another level. So you don't want to just because my wife and I did something, they people heard our story, how we started the church and had to go through all this stuff, that you quit your job and say, well, that limited me and I'm just going to. No, do not do that. But you do want to start to break the boundaries and what you believe about the job. Okay, it's not that God can't use the job. It's that you don't want the job to define you, confine you. To living in a certain way. So you want to make sure you're not allowing that to happen to you. So we're going to break these myths, these concepts, and these things that that people believe. Which, if we don't keep growing, this is something you have to sign up for voluntarily. I mean, so I can't break, I can't, I can't break your limitation without your permission. Right. Because people put up a wall and 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 and, you know I try to preach past it, but that's a hard task. Yeah. Jesus couldn't help an unbeliever. I don't think I can. So it has to come to a point where you disbelieve the world and you say, well, I'm not even sure about this kingdom thing, but I certainly am looking at them. They're failing everywhere, but we right. still give them all the loyalty, all That's the it. praise. All. How, many, how many L's does the world have to take before we say they are losers? Right. Not the people, but I'm talking about the people who tell you depend on that other than God. Right. That God stuff is just spiritual stuff and yada, yada, yada. I mean, well, whatever the case might be, we know yours ain't right. Right. This is plain to see that you can't fix stuff. Right. And as a, just a con, even if I was just a natural minded person, I said, well, they are not correct. Right. Something ain't right. So somebody say spiritual growth. Let me read. Did I read my scripture yet? No. 
Galatians chapter 6. I'm just going to undergird this with this and we'll move on to our next point here. So Galatians 6, 1 says, Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Considering yourself is pointing to spiritual growth. In other words, you have to be spiritual to help those that have been overtaking, overtaken in sin and the natural. So this tells you right here, That Paul is saying to this church, he's saying, listen, when people fall into that or if they're still stuck in the world, you can't they can't fix themselves. Spiritual people restore natural people. So if you don't grow spiritually, the world does not have hope. They think they do. They don't. They're pulling from a finite resource that eventually will come to the end and there will be a payment due that they cannot pay. And I'm not just talking about dying and going to hell. I'm talking about in this life. You will get to a point where the the natural systems will not be able to supply you. Or the natural understanding will not be able to get you out of a jam or whatever the case might be. You're pulling from your intelligence too much and you need a spiritual person or agency like the church to be able to get you developed so that when you go out that you are able to help the people who are falling in their temptation. And And that that you're not caught up in the same temptation. That's what I was about to say and that means you cannot be just like them. Exactly. Nobody's going to trust you if you are just like them. You can't help me if you're going through the same thing. You can't help me if you're just as afraid as I am. They need to see somebody who thinks above what's going on in the world, above what we see in the natural. And so you have to grow spiritually so that you can go back out there and pull people out of that darkness and into the kingdom of light. So, the, so this, te- this tells us here that, that God never expects the world to restore itself. That's right. Who has to restore those who have fallen into this temptation? You are. We are, but what are we? If we're looking at the scripture, we have to grow spiritually. That, again, means we have to see and understand the kingdom more clearly. Otherwise, there is no solution. There is no other solution. There are things that we can use to mitigate, prolong the payment. You can, you know, the credit card, they, they, they give you, it's not a payment. That is a charge. Every time you use the natural system, it's a charge. Eventually, you have to make the real payment. Yes. So, again, uh, the responsibility is on you as the ones who are in the kingdom, the one who are spiritual and understand. You have to see your life as an assignment that I'm placed here to go out and get other people into the kingdom. You can't just walk around, you know, go to the job like I'm just here for a paycheck. No longer, those days are over. You have a responsibility, a God given responsibility for you to go out there and minister this kingdom word to everybody out there. Amen? That brings us to the next point. So, somebody said, keep growing. growing. All right, now we're going to move into our, uh, with our last few minutes here. Our, 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 we're going to target some specific points, okay? So, our last specific points are going to be uh, one, one of the things that also, so you got to grow. Okay, and we understand now what that means, right? And so also, now let's point at some some things that look a little more tangible, okay? Uh, This this community and this population right here must grow. So you have to have the growth mindset. This must increase. And again, against what they say. It it can't, one way or another, the population, the assembly must grow. Uh, Throw up my scripture, guys, Proverbs 14. And then I'm going to go to Acts chapter 2. I want to show, I'm going to read these real quick. Somebody say it with me. The assembly must grow. The assembly must grow. So let's say it again. The assembly must grow. The assembly must grow. Okay, now I want to prove it to you. Proverbs 14, in a multitude of people is the king's honor. In a multitude of people, the king gets honor. But in the lack of a people that is the downfall of a prince. What this means is, is that... Even in every nation, even the kingdom of God, there must be a citizenry of people that reflect the glory or the nature of that country. If you don't have a people, meaning a citizenry, if you don't have that, the country doesn't exist. Right. So we are not actually, uh, until we get people out of the world and into the assembly, we are not even converting them into God's people. Right. Because God's people carry a culture. They don't just carry, you know, a Bible. Right. Mm -hmm. Some people carry a Bible but don't carry the culture. Mm -mm. Come on. Go ahead and say it. So you can't tell me you're Mexican but you don't know anything about Mexican culture. Right. 
You say, but I have a Mexican flag in my car. It doesn't matter. If I can't sense any of the culture, then we don't have any proof that there is even a Mexico. Yeah. People, the only, this is what God wanted. You know, he wanted to make heaven visible on the earth. Mm -hmm. Well, until his citizenry is big enough, then the people don't have proof that it even exists. Yes. So we can't have just Bibles and T-shirts and Jesus fish on our car. Right. We have to have a people that carry a different culture yes. and a different idea. So that means they're going to have to be converted and retrained because everybody has, the world is out there in masses. There's a million people in Cobb County, a million people. And the vast majority of people have no connection with God. Churches are having, you know, we got several hundred and some that have a thousand and some. But compared to the population, the world is, I mean, God's got them ripe for the picking. The harvest is plentiful. The laborers are few. That's it. So we have to, first of all, agree that the assembly must grow despite everything. So how, how are we going to do that? We have to get them out of the world into the assembly. Yes. Principle number one on this point right here. Principle number one, you cannot change a person's mind while they're in the world. This means, yes, you should, you should be inviting them and you have to be more aggressive with the relationship building out there. You have to be more aggressive in being an influence. You have to be more aggressive then finally with the invitation and bring them to church and stop coming to church by yourself. Yes. And you have to put that pressure on yourself to say Every week, I need to see if I can build a relationship, get someone, or if you have an encounter with someone, that I don't forget that sometimes they're just waiting on the invitation. Because it's not up to my preaching all the time to, people don't, the world don't even know who I am anyway. You know, only you know. So, if, unless they see some Facebook or something, they stumble on it, but we can't rely on that solely. You are the one that has to say, something amazing is happening at our church. You should come because it changed my life. It can change your life. And you get those relationships, and we must be people that bring people to God. I think we get to the place where we're excited about God changing us, but we forget about everybody else. And we need to get to a place where we're not just excited about ourselves, but we become selfless and say, you know what, what about my brother and my sister out there? Yes. They need to know. You know, and so and, re and remove all the excuses. Well, I'm shy and, and I'm this and yeah. fear. Yeah. Yeah. When you re again, you have to think of yourself. You have to think of the big picture and say, what is God trying to do? OK, now I'm going to move out of my way, move out of my own way of being, you know, I'm shy and this. And I'm going to go out there and be part of this assignment and get somebody else into this kingdom. Amen. The world. Yes. The world will not improve until more people are coming to this assembly. Yes. The reason why is because. We can't take the world back and be the influencers there if we're trying to convert people while we're there. They have, right. You have to come out of that world into this sanctified assembly. They have to come out of that world into this because you can't convert a person on the job. No. You can get them saved at the job. Yes. You can pray the prayer of faith. You can bless them at the job. You can influence them at the job. But changing a person's mind requires separation. From as, their environment. As we're talking, I'm just thinking of Luke 14, 23, where mm -hmm. um, the Bible says God is talking to us. Go yep. on to the highways and, and the byways yes. and compel them to come so that my house may be filled. This is what he's telling us to do. It's not a, I hope you can do this. It's a command. Go out and get the people so my house may be filled. Not just to, because we want a house full, but again, because we need a people who can shift the culture. And when you have a number of people going out there and shifting the culture and speaking differently, then they will see change. And they will say, wait a minute, my neighborhood looks different. My city looks different. So, so at the first part of this year, we want to refocus that. Let's get more aggressive on the mandate of the church. Let's not see the church as the place that we come and get just ourselves together. Yes. Because this is not actually, if you look at what the purpose of the church is, yes, it helps you get yourself together, right. develop spiritually, but there's no way for you to uh, come into the church and really, if you're really catching what we're saying and what we're doing here, and not feel compelled, you know yes. what I mean, to share your faith with someone or get them to the church somehow. So you don't have to become... You know, the, the, the only gospel they hear on their job, eventually you got to get them out of that over here. Right. They need to connect with the whole body. They need to see a picture of heaven on the earth. They need to be under this. This is a, um, a super concentrated injection of 
you know, uh, power and authority and anointing and a new culture. You can give them a preview, a sign, a wonder, a miracle. Right. But they have to get to the church. And my final point on, do y'all understand that? My final point on that is Acts chapter 2, 40 to 43. Can you throw it up for me, guys? I want to read this. I want to show you guys this. All right, first century church, New Testament church. Jesus starts a church. Let me show you the. Uh, so after they're filled with the Holy Ghost, Jesus talks to them about the kingdom again before he's ascended. The next chapter, this is where the church starts to blow up in growth, right? And look at what, I just want to show you a, a dynamic of it. Because if we're going to be that church, then this has to be the characteristic, okay? And with many other words... He testified and exhorted them, saying, he said, be saved from this perverse generation. He's talking to the world. He said, you're in a perverse generation. Okay? And this is what he's, and look at what he says to them to be saved or be made whole. Because remember, salvation is not, uh, I said a prayer, and I'm good to go to heaven. Salvation is, I said a prayer, I'm a citizen. Right. Now I must assimilate to the country that I just joined. Right. If you become a new citizen of the United States, they demand that you pick up their culture and drop your old. That's how all countries do it. That's how the kingdom of God does it. Uh, next verse. And then those who gladly received his word, they were baptized. So you need to get baptized. Okay? And that means, remember, baptized, let's put it in context. Baptism here is talking about joining the church. Not preparing you for heaven. Getting dunked in the water doesn't do anything for your ticket to heaven. Only Jesus does that. Okay, so you so baptism has to do with dying to self, being resurrected and picking up and assimilating a new life, going, leaving the past and uh, making a public declaration. Baptism is about the public declaration to everyone. And that's the same thing they do when you naturalize into a new country. You have to go do it publicly in front of witnesses. So when my wife was naturalized, you have to go to a ceremony where you get an American flag and you say a bunch of things and declare yourself a citizen, all these things they tell you, a, a representative from the country comes out and he essentially baptizes you. Right. Baptism is so, we don't even know what that is. I get my kids baptized when they were five. I let them live like hellions the rest of their life. Because they don't even know what that was. Right. Right? So baptizing someone now has to do with assimilation. Now, let's keep looking here. So uh, that day... 3,000 souls were added to them, to the church, right? And they, next verse, this is the most important. And they continued steadfastly. Now, that's not a regular continue. That wasn't like I came to church, it rained, I didn't come. Come on. It rained, oh, I had to work, child. I had to work last night. So I didn't come. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. You can't fellowship if you ain't here. And the way we look at online is it should be only used as a tool. Because we did spend all the money to make sure we have it. But it's an outreach or it's a tool if you're at work or vacation. But otherwise, you need to be here. Amen? Amen. So we do have it because other countries watch us, other churches and such. But we got to be here. Amen? Amen? This is real fellowship. You can't fellowship at home. I can't disciple you if I never see you. I'm trying to disciple you, but there's no accountability in that computer screen. Nope. You can just turn me off or flip to someone else, right. you know, too easily. All right. So the fellowship. Now, the, so you see that they continued steadfastly and they were in the fellowship, breaking bread and in prayers. Okay. Next verse. Let me. The fear came upon every soul. I don't know if I give you guys um, every verse, but let me flip to it. Can y'all go a few more verses? I want to show one more. You can keep going. I'll find the one I'm looking for. They had all things in common, verse 45. They sold all their possessions. Okay, keep going. Kingdom Commonwealth there. Um, yeah, verse 47. That's the last one. Praising God, having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily, daily those who were being saved. So joining the church, being a part of the church, engaging the church that becomes we are we are not trying to um help everybody out with their life we are building a different country you have to join a country as a citizen you have to be engaged in many countries they make you sign up for the military as part of the duty 
they sure do. Not in America. They sometimes we have the draft, but but in some countries, when you get to a certain age, you got to spend two years. Israel. Two to four years sometimes. Yep. So in, in the kingdom of God, you, ha- you, you don't have to, but God's making sure you understand. If this, if this is not what you're doing, you're not actually in the kingdom yet. Mm-hmm. You might be a citizen, but you're not engaged. That's good. So your mindset is still not there. You're not assimilating. So God doesn't want to just change people's religion. He wants to change the way you live right. and the focus of your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we have to expand the population. Do y'all see why? All right, two people. So say, keep growing. Is it just quiet because y'all are listening? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, all right, all right. Do you want to add anything to that? I do want to add to that. And uh, a lot of times, see, we didn't, we didn't put this one in, but the fellowship part of it is really important um, because yes, very much. what happens is a lot of times you all come to church and you leave, never fellowshipping with the never next connect, person. Yeah. But you connect with people out there. But so there's no one in your life outside of this Sunday gathering that is helping you with your growth. That is, you know, when you're going through situation, you're calling your auntie and she knows nothing about the kingdom instead of people who are learning the same thing with you. So the fellowship is. Yeah. In, yes, it's true. I, she always talk about e group. She's clapping hard back there. So, yeah, when we have e groups are, are coming, Pastor Erica. You know, um, you all need to get in because I'm telling you, it's part of the fellowship. It's part of your spiritual growth. And this year, they're not going to be all online. You need to come out of your house and meet with your team wherever they're meeting. Some of them will be hybrid and online, but it just depends. So if it's a meeting, don't be like, well, I'm so used to Zooming now. Yes. (laughs) I'm telling you, it's just not as effective. It can be used as a tool, but but that's not something we depend on. I can on. feel that as soon as I said that, I could still feel the reserve. The yeah, church yeah. is so reserved. But that's why we got to grow, right? It, that's right. Because we're reserved. In we feel like, oh, so we that, when you fellowship. feel that reservation, you say, well, this ain't right. I need to be more willing for you that. You need to say hello to somebody before you leave today. That's where it starts. You came, you might as well get the full experience. I'm going to say this real quick, too, because the problem is look, that we're so afraid of church hurt. Some of y'all dated a few times, and you don't quit doing that. Right. <laughs> you try it again. You try it again. You try it again. Well, try a new friend again. Try having church friends again. You'll get better at it the more you do it. Yes. All right. Somebody say the population, the population. must grow. And now we have a why for our what, right? All right. So churches must grow. Um, and, you know, sometimes, sometimes people actually don't want the church to grow, and then you and God are at odds on that. Yeah. So if you're like, I just love the church because it's so intimate, and it, there's ways to keep it intimate but grow. Yes. Okay? So the, the, the church that we planted from was 20,000 people, and they're still, that's what groups are for. That's what your volunteer teams are for. That's when you build relationships. It doesn't have to lose its intimacy. That yeah. is a lie. But if we're not, do you think expanding 3,000 in one day, everybody knew each other? Then don't let the devil put that in your head. That's right. You know, people say, oh, Pastor Mike, I just love this church. Back when we first started, especially. Yes. It's like, it's just so small and intimate. I said, well, you about to hate this church. Right. Because I ain't trying. I, I love the lost people out there, and I need them in That's here. That's right. Praise God. And when God. they come in here, we ain't going to be little anymore. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's get our last couple of points here. Those are kind of our two most meaty points, uh, but we do have some more. So I want to go to our, our um, keep growing in our missions reach. So we have a, um, a more, an increased demand on our, on our church for missions. Um, so what this means is we are going to be planting new kingdom seeds in the world. There are existing ministries in this country and others that go to this church that see us as a model to follow because they're preaching the gospel of the kingdom, but sometimes they need a model church to show them how to do kingdom church as well. Because some churches would say, I preach the gospel of the kingdom, but the church still runs like a democracy. So they want to fit, they want to take a kingdom message and try to cram it into a, you know, a, a, a democratic type mindset, and that can't happen. You have to have both things matching. You have to have the church uh, designed that way. That means you have to be flexible with your religious beliefs because we don't schedule everything the way religion does. We don't have this and that every single week and whatnot. But that means you have to be flexible because it's spirit-led in the New Testament. It's spirit-led. It is not led by, you know, holidays and different things, okay? So 
when, it, when it's like that, our missions reach, we are helping other people understand that new model. So we travel to other countries. We have stuff planned all next year. Um, and we are going out to raise and develop leaders to help their churches. This is the main type of missions that we do. So we're training pastors who have started things in foreign countries and so forth. And that takes a commitment to if we want to be a global church, which we already are. But if we're going to let it grow, we have to grow to be able to handle that demand. Right. And so we want to make sure that we're focused on that. But also within this country, there's a lot of up and coming uh, leaders who want to preach this gospel. But then there's also a lot of older pastors who are reaching out saying, listen, I, I, I realize that I need to preach this kingdom message that Jesus himself preached. So I have to convert my whole church. And so don't let the, the exterior of what's going on out here fool you. We have a heavy uh, demand and a mission. And so it, I'm not going to be able to do that with what we currently have. We all have to be willing to grow and move and be flexible. And if that's, So you get a, a grip of what this church is all about. So you can see when we're moving and what we're doing and why we're doing it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, did you want to say anything about that part? Okay, so I'm going to save the best for last, okay? This is my... Second to last point. Uh, so the increase of the church because of those demands and the others that I'll name, we have to hire more people this year. Paid staff. So right now the church has two paid staff people. So just me and Pastor Kevon. That's it. Uh, we just brought Pastor Kevon on this past year. But we have to have more. We need several more to be able to do what we're trying to do. Um, because while we have a great volunteer base, we still need a few more hands of people that are Available during the day, all day, any day, anytime, anywhere, because it's just, it's just if you're going to be big church, and that's a mentality, versus small church mentality, you know, you don't think, small church mentality is everybody's a volunteer. You know, it's like just whomever, and then you can't, because people work and everything, you can't get as specialized and be as good as you could be. So yes, we absolutely need volunteers, but we also need to do that. But what does that mean? That means financially, we have to take another step up. Yes. And again, it's available in the kingdom. I don't even care what the world is talking about. That's right. God, if you believe what I believe, God is going to show you how to do better this year yes. so that his kingdom can operate on another level. And it shouldn't be where, you know, a small handful of people are doing everything. Right. Are y'all with me on that? Yes. So we do need to hire more people uh, with certain specialties and certain things that they do so that we can expand more. That is a must. That is a must. Um, and then lastly, uh, this is our last one, but this is a, one of my favorite ones. Actually, I have two, but I can incorporate them both on this one. Uh, our E-team, which is our volunteers, that's our volunteer base, the E-team has to grow. Yes. Amen? Amen. Yes. Yes. There are yes. some areas of the church that the E-team has a pretty full um, roster, but there's a lot of areas, and plus as we grow and go to a second service, when everybody's here, we're already, we should probably already start thinking of a second service. Everybody that's online, represent, if, if everybody online on a typical Sunday came, we wouldn't fit. We'd already be at a second service. So if that, as that grows in here, it, it expands, it makes us move to a second service. Well, then you need more people, right? Right. So we have, so if you're not engaged in a team, new year, it's time to get engaged. Our volunteer process is very easy, but I, let me tell you one of the biggest needs we always have is our babies. Yes. Children and babies. Students, children, baby. All yes. those things put together. And for some reason, I get it. For some reason, people go back there and they're excited for a minute. And then all of a sudden they're missing church and they're like, but by the way, we have a volunteer service in the morning. Yes, so the do. E team has their yep. own service that we don't have, uh, you know, everyone come to. It's just for them. We have the worship and the word all together. And so you don't miss church. No. You don't miss church. You don't have everybody here, but this is where we have to level up. Right. We, we have to level up. We can't have people starting to feel like you're doing God's purpose back there. So you don't you don't want now I'm missing church. We have to have people that start to, to spiritually grow to say, if I'm back there, I am fulfilled. Yes, because those children need that. That's right. You get what I'm saying? Like, yes. like we if we won't prioritize because we're not in here, mm -hmm. then we're neglecting the future generation. That's right. They and they always need people. They always need people. They need people that love babies, love kids, love students, all of those things, and especially the kids because that's on Sunday. Students, is a, we do that on a different day. But I'm telling you, 
the E-Kids team must grow. All the media teams must grow. The Usher teams must grow. The First Impressions must grow. So the guest services table is where you want to get signed up at. But if we're going to be able to do what we came to do, you have to grow. Do you want to add anything? Yeah, and you and what happens is you take the uh, heavy load off of, you know, of just a few people. If we all can share in it, you know what I'm saying? So it's not like four or five people doing everything and, you know, we're just watching them over there struggle. But rather, we're all in it together and we yes. can share that, you know, that burden together. It's not a burden. They have to kick me it's out of there all the time. It's not a burden when you share it. They have to. I, I'm always like, hey, I'll, I'll take my shoes off. I'll come back there. And they're like, no, Pastor, go back. If I wasn't back. preaching, I I'm would telling go. you. You know, because I realize how important it is to be back there with those kids. Like he said, that's the future generation. Imagine we're getting them so early, understanding the kingdom. Yeah. That and that's early. that's what they're learning. That's what they're learning, the kingdom back there. They have the same kingdom curriculum back there. So, and it grows you as a, as, as a, oh, yeah, as a absolutely. person yourself. If you're back there teaching kids these little ones. kids will challenge you, man. Oh, yeah. Some of y'all, y'all kids, they got mouth. They'll be like, I don't know. Is that really true? But it, it really makes you focus, and you're, re you're preparing to talk to them back there. So, again, that's the spiritual growth for yourself. Amen? And so to add to this point, are y'all bored? Is this okay? We're almost finished. I hope you're not bored. Amen. Yes. T next week, I'm going to be back up here shouting. Amen? <laughs> but um, I'm actually enjoying this. Are y'all enjoying this format? We did, uh, is this, would, would it ever be cool if I preach from here? I like it kind of. He, he wouldn't be, able, I'd be to able to sit still. He's only I sitting still because I'm up here, too. Yeah. If, he, if I wasn't up here, he'd already be st standing up. <laughs> With the board. Yeah, the board. So let me add to that E-teamers e and future E-teamers and those of you who are online who are going to come to be E-teamers. Um, so this part, you can take this, but let me just explain the attitude of this. I've been doing church a long time. I've seen every church of every size. We've been... You know, at this, at this for a very long time on, on the highest levels and now planting a new church. And so I'm just, I, I know what I'm talking about. You just have to trust my experience here. So I want to explain this to you. We have to, not that we're not doing a fantastic job, but if we're talking about growth, okay, we're, that means we're talking about being a little uncomfortable. So as E-teamers and volunteers, when you sign up, this is the attitude that has to come about. And we have to go more in this direction. All right, and I jotted some notes down for this. We have to get more... Uh, into the idea of it's less about me, yes. less about my preference and where I serve, less about my position and do I get to be seen or not. Okay, you have to decrease and let it be about what does God's house need from me. And it might not be where you are dominantly gifted just yet, yes. but you know that when you go through our process to be an E-teamer, our goal is to eventually get you there, right? Right? Pastor Courtney, I mean, Courtney, well, she could be Pastor Courtney, couldn't she? <laughs> Miss Courtney is leading the worship team. She was everything before. Yeah. Pastor Erica was everything before. Ushers, kids. And then, you know, up here on the stage, you wouldn't believe that she was an usher, I mean, a, a kids worker, right? Because right. she's just crushing it up here now. But, right. but she did that and right. was not anywhere near the stage yet. So just, and being flexible. I can do this and this, you know, um. But just trusting the system, trusting the process, and being less about where you're seated, and just being like, hey, I'm engaged. Yes. What does the church need is the first calling on your life. Everybody's so much about, like, what's my purpose? What's my The purpose is, do you got two hands and two feet? Right. Can you wave and smile? Well, good. We need somebody out there that waves and smiles. You'll be surprised what you find out about yourself yeah. just by serving yes. God's house. You'll be so surprised. And you'll make the best friends yes. you've ever made because something different happens when you connect and you start serving God's house. I mean, if you feel like you don't have no friends, join a team. That's over. Yep. That's it. That's over. Yep. Instant friends and godly friends. Mm -hmm. Instant friends. So it, it gets less about that and more about what needs to happen in the church. Less about your schedule. What we all have to start to do, and I know this is a journey, okay? It's a journey. You, some people can't get off work right now. I understand that. I've been there. But at some point, what God is doing in the earth through the church has to override your business demands and your job and all of that. It has to. At some point, because, listen, if you have, we was telling the story earlier today. There was a fella in, in the church we planted from who was a multimillionaire business person and real estate person, right? And so when you came in the church, you wouldn't know that. 
because he was the person that held the front door and handed the brochures. Right. Handed the program, whatever we call it. What do they used to call that? Church bulletin. The bulletin. Mm-hmm. Program, whatever they call it. But, you know, you wouldn't know that, but he always shut down business and shut down everything, and he prioritized the house of God. That made his business flourish. That's right. But if you go out there and keep trying to work it all out, because all you're trying to do is make your ends meet, and you say, well, God knows I got to work. God knows you don't understand the kingdom, right. and you don't have to work as hard once you start operating these other principles. Yes. I know, and I'm not telling you to quit your job and walk in there and say, I got to be at church. Y'all better let me off on no. Sunday. But what I am saying is the way I got it done is I started sowing my seeds in that direction. And I would tell God, God, you know, I want to be at church. Yes. And it took me several months to get there. But eventually he met my demand. The job I was at gave me a promotion, a pay raise and my weekends off. And there was only five people in the company that they gave that to. And guess what? I worked there a few more years after that and did church and uh, the job. And I never, they went back to doing weekends again, and they never demanded that I go back. The whole company went back. I never did. They never saw me another weekend in my life. Once I got that off, I said, and they will never get me back. Yeah. They would talk to the whole company. We're going to mandatory weekends. And then after the meeting was over, they pulled me to the side and said, except for you, we know you work at the church. And so... <laughs> I had every, everybody in the company started hating me. Yep. I don't see Mike here. What's Mike? Yep. They, and I was a volunteer. And they said, did they, they, did they pay you out there? I said, yes, they do. He said, he said I, I didn't say it was money. I just said it pays. It does pay. Yep. It does pay. It does. When I serve God, he takes care of my needs. So, yes, it pays. Yes. I mean, yes. the church didn't write me no checks. But, but God, I, I'm telling you. Yep. Does anybody believe that serving God to open things up for you like that? Yes. It will. it will. Guys, we should be embarrassed if next year we have teams that are short because we have a big enough church that we should yes. have more than enough. Yes. We should have people. And listen, let me explain this to you. Some of y'all are, are uh, servaholics, okay? And that's fine because you got to have some of those too. Yes. But if we take some of your time away yes. because we have more than enough, that should be good that's for you. Good you should be like, praise God. Yes. And don't feel like, you know, that we're taking you down because we don't like you or something. Right. But we want to make sure we preserve everyone. We'll make sure you have a rotation. But for those of you who are serveholics and you have to be there all the time and you would like to, now you don't have to, what do we? We get to. We get to. And the last thing is, is incorporated with E-teamers is we're always looking for to, to promote more leaders, uh, leaders to positions of leadership. So last year we did some. We expect to do that every year. And how does it work around here with leaders? And that doesn't just mean pastors, but team leaders, uh, pastors, and, and people that are helping with the church administratively, okay? How does that happen? It happens by you starting serving. And when those qualities are exhibited, yep. then we start thinking about promotion. Then we have a talk with our team, with our pastors, with our elders, with our board. We go through a little process before we come to you. But if people are looking for a kingdom promotion, you have to already be exhibiting the thing yep. for a long period of time to be trusted, right? So um, Pastor Narissa, I was using her as the example. Um, she's the kid's pastor now. She was the kid's director. Then she started just as a kid's worker. And my wife was actually, weren't you filling in before? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So before she came along a few years ago, when we promoted her, I said, I want you to understand. We presented it to her. She wanted to do it. I said, I want you to understand, though. We're not promoting you to get you to do something different. You were already doing that. That's it. You were already pastoring without a title. You were already doing the job without the title. She was already making this, uh, you know, controlling the service, developing team members. So if you're waiting on somebody to give you a title, then you're going to start amping it up. Right. You're going to be waiting a very long time. No. Because we don't do that. No. If you are already on it, yeah. then there's a chance you might get promoted. But we don't believe in titles make people do better things. In fact, titles mess people up. It sure does. It sure people, does. Sometimes you give them a title, they just lose their mind. Like you was all of a sudden, you was doing something good, and then we gave you a title, and you just started what, You started walking around here like, and guys, you can't untitle a person. Almost every time they have to leave the church. Yeah. Can you imagine? Give them a title, they lose their mind, and then you come to them and say, well, let's take the title away. <laughs> God anointed me, how dare you? Right. So, guys, so we do it very carefully. And we, we came to Atlanta um, 
with the mindset of to create leaders, to, to find Absolutely. leaders. Absolutely. And we even uh, we speak when we speak to our leaders, we tell them and say, hey, look for the leader in, in your group. Yeah. Look for the leader in who's you making know, it happen. Exactly. So everybody, wherever you serve, there are you know people are already looking. They're already you know we they have that mindset of like you know who should be promoted in here and who should you know who wants the position. Sound team, can you play something right here? We're gonna pray. This is the, this is the end of today. Um, nobody even broke a sweat. Nice calm day. Are, are you guys are you guys excited about going forward? Yes, you should be. That's a big vision. And by the end, when we have this day next year or the next time we do it, whenever that is, listen, we want to check off the marks and say we did those things. Yes. Right. So, yes, there are going to be challenges against the people of God. But the more they persecuted them, the yes. more they grew. I want you to look at every challenge you face, and I want you to start making sure the church is becoming the center of your life because it's the body of Christ. It's not a building with a bunch of people. It is the life source yes. to your future. It will keep you stronger, healthier, better. You'll be a better dad. You'll be a better uh, employee. You'll be a better CEO. You'll be a better boss. You'll be a better business person. You'll be a better person. And that's how we change things. But we can't put God on the side and say, well, I didn't have time and I had to work. And listen, don't quit your job and none of that. But start asking God and start believing. He will. I don't know how long it'll take, but he'll start making you more available. In the meantime, get on a team. Guest services is open today. If God is already speaking to you, don't wait. Why are you waiting? What you waiting on? More information? This is all we got. This is it. That's the whole sales pitch right there. there this is all we got. We don't got nothing else. We're on a mission together. There's a bunch of loving people here. And by the way, when you sign up for an E-team, it's not an eternal. You can never stop doing it. We have ways to start and we have ways to stop. And you don't have to ever leave the church. That leadership comment was a joke, you understand? The E-team part, people switch teams all the time, okay? So find a need and fill it. That's the first thing to do. Just find a need and fill it. And, they'll, and Pastor Amanda will help you get signed up, amen? amen. I'm going to let my wife pray us out of here. And listen, you know what? I'm going to let you pray. I was about to say something, but I feel like God's put something on your heart okay. today. Let's pray together. Let's pray. Well, Father, we heard what you desire today for the church. God, you, you spoke the vision that you desire for Excel Church. And Father, now we just, I pray that everybody who, at the sound of my voice, just embrace that. And that God, we would just take it as our own now yes. and go out and do what you've called us to do, God. I pray for people that, uh, I pray, Lord, that people will be on their assignment, yes. not just today, but every day as they leave out of here, every day as they leave out of their home, God, that, they're, they, that they go out on a mission to find those that sit in darkness, God, yes, yes. and bring them into the kingdom of light. Yes. God, give them strength to do it. Yes. Give them the wisdom to do it, God. And, Father, I thank you that your desire is for this church to grow. I pray yes, growth. Yeah, growth. I pray growth spiritually. spiritually. I pray in the yes. name of Jesus that in our own homes yes. that we grow, God, yes. spiritually. Father, that we know who we are in you and the assignment that you've placed in us, God, that it'll begin to flourish. It'll begin to come out and people will see us, God, and begin to see a new culture, a new people, a new church, a new way of life, a new way of living, God. Yes, Give us the strength to do that. Give us the wisdom to do that, God. And Father, as we go into 2022, God, I pray peace over your people. I pray prosperity over your people. I pray, God, that you will satisfy us with long, healthy life. Yes, yes, yes. We give you glory, honor, and praise in this church. In your name we pray. Amen. Come on, let's put Amen. our hands together for what God is doing at your church. <laughs> Listen, if you're new here today or new online, make yourself known online. Just say, I'm new here. Somebody will reach out to you. We want to talk to you. We want to connect with you. If you're new in the room today, all you need to do is stop by the guest services. We're not wanting to interrogate you. We just want to give you a gift. You don't have to talk to anybody. But we're going to just let you leave with a gift. And we're just glad you came today. Amen? Amen. God bless you guys. Next week we get right into our series, You Care. It's going to be powerful. I promise you. We'll see you Sunday.